previous video we explored Wadi Room on a Jeep tour. On today's we're gonna go through the longest, most tiring and unexpected day of our trip. Starting on a sunrise mission in Wadi Rum and finishing the day super late in Petra doing something we never thought we would actually do. Good morning. Yesterday we decided that we wanted to do a sunrise camel ride because we weren't sleepy. <laughs> now we are. Anyways. <coughs> Um, it was quite cold in, in, during the night, actually, uh, but we weren't using all of our blankets. Um, so we're going now, it's 5.20. We'll be back then for breakfast. Ooh. the red sand and today there's no rain but we have to climb this up again I have bad memories that's where I broke my screen and where it was pouring rain the camels are at the bottom and we're just hiking up so we can see the sunrise from the top of the rock So he wants to stop every single time to have breakfast. <laughs> bread. bread. He likes bread. bread. He likes bread. bread. And he will be happy because he loves food. Yeah. Taking his time. Oh. Goodbye, Mai. Can I get you? Goodbye, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll come. You. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> At the information point, we met this lovely gentleman who used to live in Brazil for a few years and so he had a really good Portuguese. When he heard that we wanted to do High Place of Sacrifice on day 1 and Monastery on day 2, he showed us this really good shortcut that goes at the end of High Place of Sacrifice trail around the mountain instead of taking the usual and long trail. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the three travelers we met in Wadi Rum, Saul and the two Nicholas? We actually crossed paths with them in Petra and so we decided to go explore together.
us, you can select the number of days that you're going to come to uh, Petra. So the price is different according to if you come one, two or three. And uh, included in your ticket, you have a horse or donkey ride. But obviously, even though it's for free, they ask you to give a tip and not a simple one. Not only that, then the way they are treated and they carry so many people, I just think it's not really fair. Whereas in the camels, they were quite well treated where we were. So because of that, we would rather not have or not take our ride on the horse. And we decided to stick only to camel in Wadi Rum. Sacrifice, we're still trying to figure out where to go, and we just split up with the other guys because they're going to the monastery, which we are going to do tomorrow. So, yes, Debbie's like the photographer of this place. <laughs> hey, I thought we'd gone left. <laughs> we were, but apparently, stranger. not there. It's okay. <laughs> there somewhere. <laughs> So to go to the highest place of sacrifice, you have to see this shop over here in the, in the back and then turn left instead of going straight towards the theatre right there at the end. Our legs got really really tired from Wadi Rum Whew. and this is going to be a hell of a journey. place of sacrifice it's so beautiful and not only that but you've got lots of different spots where you can take pictures if you like pictures I really think it's truly worth it to get up here and it was quite okay for us maybe half an hour hike so it's really good quite steep but great as you can guess high place of sacrifice used to be the site where rituals and sacrifices took place it's located in a high point of Petra, and so you get amazing views over the Asian city. We have no idea actually where we are uh, since we came down. Yeah, Jordan and Petra. Since we came down um, the high place of sacrifice, we kind of not sure because the guy in the entrance told us to go one way, and I'm pretty sure we passed it away. And we have no idea where to turn anymore. Uh, but there's a really nice building up there, or down there, and I have no idea what that is on the map, but all good. Even though we didn't know that, we basically came down the high place of sacrifice and we're about to enter the Wadi Farasa area. This is a place where you won't see many people around, but you'll be surprised by the amount of ruins and beautiful tombs that you can find in here. There is also, well, an entrance just under that same building we just saw over here. And there's some like columns inside of it. This is really nice. And there's another one. So we're gonna discover it and let's see if we can actually know where we are. Tricilium, so that's the garden. We're actually very far from the main road. Yeah. But this is stunning. Banquet halls like this one were built under important people's tomb by the Nabataeans, those who built Petra. They would conduct here religious rituals related to the deceased and also on important dates. Let's discover this one. of Petra when the sun is gonna set and we still want to go to 
petrified night and have in mind that we woke up at 5 a.m. to do a camel riding. <laughs> We're full of energy. You see how the ceiling is like dark? It seems like it was burnt. There is so much to see in this area that you could easily spend one hour here if you want to enter every single tomb. We found many doors of what it seems to be like Bedouin houses, and of course, there be found more camels. He doesn't like me. Why? <laughs> Saying hi in his own way. When you leave Wadi Farasa into the open, the path becomes less clear. After a while, you reach this place where you can see the signs pointing left to follow the trail. Instead, we kept right following the mountain. So a Bedouin gentleman saw us, and I think he thinks we're lost. We were actually, but we're not anymore. <laughs> so he's pointing us and actually leading us to the right direction around the mountain, which is, by the way, the place we were going to already. The guy who helped us, he kind of asked for money at the end. Of course. <laughs> he, of course. He was nice to us anyway, and he was in pain, at least it looked like that. And I decided to do so. And there was a guy as well, I heard about this before. Uh, by the way, families can invite you to stay with them for a cup of tea uh, before you go to Pedro by night. And then obviously it's up to you if you decide to go or not. We decided not to, and I think that's the guy that's behind <laughs> And we decided not to, very much. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> always happy. You know, I, I would say, smile for life, life smile for you. Yeah, <laughs> agree. And this way, we walked back to the gate and came back two hours later to experience Petra by night. Petra by night, it's not included in your Jordan ticket and costs 17 dinars per person which is quite pricey for the experience that you can actually get. It runs every three times a week on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday at 8.30pm but they have now opened a new slot at 7pm due to high demand. After the short show, we were approached by two Bedouins suggesting to take us to a high point where we could see the treasury and Petro by night with no one else. After accepting the invitation, many things didn't go as planned on that night. We had so many mixed emotions and this was such an expected and interesting night that I'll definitely have to do another video on it. It was way past midnight when we finally got to the gates of Petra, being the last visitors leaving the site on that night. After a good night of sleep, we would have to wake up at 6am to be at the monastery early in the morning without the crowds. You think we're gonna be able to do it? Let's find out in the next video. Thank you so much for watching until the end, please subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, leave a like and a comment and I'll look forward to see you again on the next one. Bye-bye! We came back to the rent. Ah, rent. We <laughs> might Bring my vlog. I thought I just lost my microphone. But everything is okay. <laughs> we were at the high place of sacrifice, but there is a point that you can go all the way up. And I think it's also the high place of sacrifice. I'm very confused.